Hey everyone, it's your favorite host, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And today, you all are in for a treat. I have this incredible speaker. This man has been all over the world speaking at conferences, teaching. He's a master of the media. That's why I call him the, the Grand Poobah we have coming to the stage today. You won't want to miss one second of what this special guest of mine has come into the stage. Stay tuned. Stay with us. Here we go. Hey everyone, it's your favorite host, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And today we, you, me, are in for a treat. I have coming to the stage, Mr. Mitch Carson. This man is world-renowned, exceptional, professional, celebrated, and sought-after speaker and closer. He is an entrepreneur in every sense of the word. He's an expert in anything he touches. He's been to 63 countries and produced over 2,000. Get it, 2,000 live events in 19 of those countries. Been a home shopping network pitchman. He's He's been in the media, does the media. People look for him, know him, and, a, and an incredible smile to boot. You can't, you gotta love this man. I have a fallen for this man, incredible man. And we are here to pick his brain, to see if we can get the inside scoop on how he does it, and if he can help us get to our business and become a, a, a maybe not as better, but as decent a public speaker as we possibly can. Please help me welcome to the stage the incredible Mr. Mitch Carson. Welcome to Gentleman Style Podcast stage, sir. Thank you, Mr. Carson. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for that outstanding interview. I think I will hire you for every one of my podcasts. You've got it going on, Marcus. You are a gentleman. Thank you, Mr. Carson. It is an honor, sir. You did all the work. I, I am just in awe of you, and I wanted to present you in the best light possible. So thank you for making time for us, my audience, and being here and giving back in this way. This is phenomenal, sir. And I, I always ask, when, when did, did you get the book? When did, it, when did it dawn on you that you have a talent for media and a talent for public speaking? When did it occur? Was it when you were 8 years old, 12 years old? When did you know? I don't have a story of me being great right out of the box. I was terrible. As a matter of fact, I started out as a very fearful speaker to now where I would say I'm fearless as a speaker. I still have a little bit of those nerves, even though I do it pretty much every day. I'm talking on camera. You know, I've been in the media. It came through a difficult life situation and i'll be happy to share that because i have no shame in my life at the age of 63 there isn't anything i'm embarrassed about at this point nor am i hiding under a rug because i'm at the point where if i say something that can help somebody i'm paying it forward properly and that's what mature people do they make their life experiences available to the younger generation so they can learn from it, if they're open to it. We need that, please. And I I always ask that question because there is, there is a lesson in our elders. There's a lesson to be learned from wisdom. You've done it all. You've been there. 63 countries. When I say wisdom, that is saying it lightly. I can't imagine the vast amount of knowledge you've acquired over your years. And again, at 63, you look fantastic he looks cut i need to get in the gym y'all oh, i'm so geez. serious this, i need to work on my physique but mr carson when did, you said you were terrible but when did you notice when did you really start taking off for you um because people notice you you're, you're sought after all over the world yeah i've done a a pretty good job in branding myself when i knew that it was extremely important to do so and maintaining uh, here's a metaphor. If you want to get booked as a speaker, you want to get noticed as a business person, you can package yourself in Target paper or Tiffany. It takes the same amount of effort, maybe a little bit more to earn Tiffany distinction 
which wrapping do you believe? I'm going to ask some of your listeners out there as well when they get this. Which wrapping will garner more attention, more respect, more credibility, and higher prices, premium prices for either your service or your product? That's true. And when I started in the business of speaking, it came out of something rather organic. I never aspired to be a professional speaker. I never saw myself. I was an only child raised by a single mother, very introverted, bit of a bookworm. And my mother married my stepfather, who was a great guy. Uh, and then they both passed when I was 22 years old, five weeks apart. Just uh, so. illnesses. Yeah, things. It's, it was a rough time. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say, oh, yeah, I just toughed yeah. it out. No, it hurt. Felt abandoned. Went through some changes. Had a little problem with substance abuse at that point, which took me down a, a, a downward spiral. I fortunately found myself, found something, a higher power, which enabled me to overcome this major obstacle where I could have died. And I'll save all the gory details, but there was just one day, July 1st, 1984, where I made the decision I've had enough and I'm going to check myself into a rehab, which I did. And I've been clean and sober now since July 1st, 1984, a little over four years. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. I love your sound effects, man. You're quite the host. So this that's is really huge. good, Mark. Thank you. So I then was asked to speak and share my story. That's how you pay it forward. You help the younger generation. You do that selflessly. It was unpaid. Started to do it, and I slowly got better at it. At first, I was terrible, shook, went in the bathroom and vomited. Before the idea of standing in front of a group of people, I could have never done this had I not been forced into it. Forced in terms of using a strong word, I forced myself to push through the pain because what's courage is when something's difficult and you do it anyway, because you know the outcome that is necessary. You walk through, you walk across glass if you know that you're going to survive. You'll jump out of a burning building even if you break your legs because you want to live. And the will to live exceeded the will to die. The will to live exceeded the desire. The, the will to share exceeded the desire for me to stay comfortable in my fear. And I think to be a successful person in general, most of the problems we experience are right between our left ear and our right ear in the gray matter. And once we're able to address that honestly and seek help, and sometimes that help is the form in the form of love from others that will help us get to where we need to go because you don't have to do this journey alone. Some people I know reach out to God. Some people reach out to friends. There is a support network. There are support networks out there. And the most successful people I have met, Marcus, in my 63 years on the planet, rely on somebody else other than themselves. If they do it all on their own, they're either sporting a very big Pinocchio nose or they're simply rare. There are some of those, but they are few and far between. Most successful people work hard on themselves and they also have an open space for being teachable. Because the best teachers are also fantastic students and willing to take in the support of others. So when I went through my alcohol and, and drug addiction issue, my substance abuse issue, came out of it, started speaking, the journey was selfless. It was about me giving back because I was so grateful to my higher power that had saved me. That it saved my soul because I should have died logically, but I didn't. So I had a purpose. That purpose turned into a passion. And that passion then turned into profits. How? When I was speaking, a man who owned a mortgage company saw me speak 
and said, Mitch, I'd like you to come and speak to a group of my clients up in Seattle, Washington. And I was living in LA at the time, Marcus. And he sent me a business class ticket. Now, I had never flown business class. This was a big deal. And he sent me a check for 500 bucks. $500. Mm. Mm. I, got, I got paid to speak. Wow. I really felt like a special person at that point because of my information. And I came in, didn't talk. I only spoke about marketing a business. I was in the direct mail business. I had a direct mail shop advertising using unique mailers to open doors for people in the mortgage business so they could get more clients or thank them. So I had a unique specialty and I spoke about it and gave case studies of successful clients I had in LA. These people ate it up. Not only did I get paid, flew business class, stayed in a five-star hotel, ate well while I was there for overnight. And then they, and then they took me to the airport. Then I, I, I was able to write about $65,000 in business on the spot. Mm. I thought, this wow. is amazing because I spoke. And then something was born. It's called one-to-many selling, one-to-many marketing. No different than what you're doing because you have listeners, and I hope they're more than one. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's one-to-many conveying value, communicating Tips, nuggets, what have you that you that I can impart to your listeners and viewers because we're this is a video podcast, and that's valuable. I then had my my whole business strategy change from one to one to one to many, and I never looked back from that point forward. And since then, it's been my principal way of marketing and selling has been on the platforms of live stages in person meaning shaking hands, post-COVID, then it turned into webinars and virtual events. And today, it's a hybrid of both. Something like this. I mean, we're not selling here today. I'm just communicating value to your listeners, some of whom may want to reach out to me if they want what I uh, share. And that's the value of having the ability to communicate clearly and valuably to an audience that's ready to receive it. Powerful. First off, I want to say I'm glad you're here. Thank you. I want to say I want to start off with that and say I'm really grateful that you're here with us and that through life circumstances that you, the universe was not done with you and you Correct. had a bigger purpose and you saw through and you pushed through and you made that turning point. You, you mentioned this earlier, branding. It's important to establish a brand. Does everybody need a brand? What is branding and why did that play a pivotal role? I hear it used all the time. Everyone says, I got to work on my brand. Oprah is a brand. Why is that significant in this public speaking space? Well, let, let's look at it this way. I use the metaphor, the comparison of Target. We have largely an American audience, I presume, that's listening to your podcast. So they know the two retailers. The, the five-star retailer is Tiffany and Company, which comes in a blue and white box. And if you are packaged like Tiffany, that gem is polished. That's inside that box. The excited smile of the woman that receives the gift that comes out of that box might be the best you can get. That's called a brand, and that's Tiffany. It's no different than the at any time. If I were to, I'm going to ask you a question. What's yes, number one university in the world? Harvard. Bingo. Nine out of ten would people would say that. Even half the Brits would say it. Not Cambridge or Oxford. But as Americans, we know that Harvard is top of the food chain as a university. It's a brand. Is their curriculum any different than what? The state college may have? Probably not. They might learn from the same textbooks. The professors might be a little more down to earth at the state college than the stuffy ones that are at Harvard. But if you've got the big H on your resume, doors will open. Fairly, I would say. Not unfairly, fairly, 
because you have done what it's taken in order to earn that badge, that brand. Now, let's take this and apply it to the real world. That's a college. If you have been on your podcast and other well-known podcasts as a, an insurance broker, let's just take the insurance agent. He's been on your podcast and 10 other excellent podcasts that are well-hosted, have great notes, are out there. There's got there's Google juice associated with that interview. Backlinks back to this person's site. He can showcase it. How's his credibility compared to the guy that has no podcast whatsoever and isn't wrapped properly? Who's going to get the sale? Because you One, know, right. everybody Googles everybody today. Yes, sir. They review us. Yes, sir. You might have Googled me before you accepted me as a, ho- a guest on the show. Yes, sir. It's nor- natural what we do. And if it comes up, when you look for Joe Smith, and he's been on your podcast and a bunch of others, oh, this guy is actively credentializing himself. He's actively marketing himself. He's comfortable in his expertise. Therefore, he must be an expert. I want to buy whatever he's peddling. Well, how do I how do I get you to see that in the beginning? Right? You've you've done this for years, but how do I get someone to see that Tiffany pa- level packaging, that quality in the beginning? How do I get there? You simply start with one step at a time. The first step, I would say, Marcus, and now it's just my opinion. Let's who are your your main clients? Describe that person to me. Who is that? Entre- your- it's entrepreneurs. It's okay. it's businessmen, talk- businessmen right, and women. All right, let's talk about businesswoman Jane. Okay. There is a lady that I'm going to refer to your podcast, as a matter of fact, she's out of Atlanta and she's bomb. She her name is Jane. Jane teaches people, she comes from Kenya. She teaches, so she's a real person, but last name I'll tell you later, but she comes from Kenya. She teaches women how to be fit, healthy, and how to manage their diet. She's got a program for it. She's very successful at it. She's a client and a friend. She took the time to learn how to speak. She had no speaking experience. She also took the time to study people, take photos, and different opportunities, she exercised or accessed steps that were critical to become the known expert in her category. She posted regularly. Today, personal branding is expansive. In the past, it was, I think if you want to be a successful entrepreneur and own your niche or be one of the most uh, thought about persons in your niche. And sometimes it's hard to be number one, but number two is bad in some cases. All right. Yes, sir. So sought out as an expert in your category. Number one, your social media has to be tight. And that's a whole topic. I could talk about it, but let's start with LinkedIn, your Facebook, your YouTube. You know, if you tweet and twit and TikTok and dance, wonderful. All right. I don't, I'm not going to talk about those. My focus is LinkedIn and YouTube. Second, those have to be tight. Second, if you truly want to be distinctive in your marketplace, and you've possibly heard this before, you got to write a book. It's not complicated. It's a lot easier than it ever was. Got to write a book. 10,000 to 20,000 words is the range of readership today. That is statistically sound information I'm providing. Because one of my programs, I I don't do in the U.S., I do it in Asia with my clients there, is take them through the book writing process, publication, and then marketing. Now, how do you market that book, which also works in tandem with the book, is getting in front of the media. Now, podcasts are a great way to help sell and create some buzz around your books. The other way is to get on terrestrial radio shows and network television shows. Network TV is the highest level of credentialing 
available, in my opinion. I think podcasts are great also, but there are varying degrees. There are varying degrees in network television. If you are on Oprah Winfrey show, oh my gosh, you're you're swimming in cougar ants. Would you agree <laughs> with that? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, I mean, now it's the Ellen show. I think she's the big B of uh, daytime. But if you bring your book and she talks about your book to her audience, man, it's you're you're on the way. You've just been credentialed by the number one talk show. But we we grew up around Oprah. She was the woman. She was the if you got your book and got talked about on her show, you were a New York Times bestseller guaranteed. That was the formula. Not everybody has that opportunity. The other opportunities to get booked on network TV shows all around the country or in a market and use that to then start snowballing into other media. Because one of the biggest challenges of a producer with these shows, and it's no different than you, you've got to vet. If I came on your show stuttering and you had, no, you had not done your homework on me, you might be embarrassed. Yes, you not broadcast this to your audience because you have to covet and protect your brand because a brand is your image. Yes, and sir. brand, personal brand, is what people say about you when you're not in the room. Yes, how sir. do they perceive you in the marketplace? That's how you evaluate your personal brand. What is it that people say about you, believe about you, feel about you? And that's your positioning. I can go through the clinical definition of personal brand from some stuffy professor at the local university, but here's that is the condensed version. What they say, feel, think about you when you're not in a room. This is this is jam packed. And like I told y'all, this is a jam packed. This is a true professional been in the industry for years, sharing nuggets and giving back in this way. One more round of applause for Mr. Carson, Mr. Mitch. This is epic. Mitch. Yes, sir. You told me to call you Mitch. <laughs> yes, please do. So, so how, how should I write a letter? Should I be emailing? Do I need a brand specialist? Do I need to be having relationships with Agent, should I hire an agent to help me get on those major television networks? Um, you mentioned LinkedIn, YouTube, write a book, and then next was network television. I feel like every I think people, like you said, publishing a book, people can figure out I can hire someone to help me with my LinkedIn profile and get that up to date. But network television, I still feel is a gate, a gated community still. It is a gated community unless you know the right person and you're talking to them. And I, <laughs> well, I live in Las Vegas, as I mentioned. This is a unique market. It's the number one entertainment capital of the world. Uh, it's the convention capital of the world. I have relationships with the CW, NBC, ABC, and CBS television stations here. And that is what I do. Clients come out and visit me, and in two days, they're covered on interview on all four of those stations. Two are pre-recorded, and also two are live. I suggest, and I media train everybody before they go on air. It is completely different than being on a podcast. It's completely different than talking to your grandma over dinner. You've got to be prepared. There are no ums, ahs, you know, like, right. All of those verbal faux pas are pounded out of your brain. Not allowed. Can't do it. Can't represent yourself in that manner. Mitch won't let you get on TV until you are totally trained and ready. That's what I do specifically in the Las Vegas market. Because this is where I live. This is what I know. And then I recommend people to, they graduate from this. It's all done in two days. They get on a radio show, a live radio show. They are ready for media in their market and other markets. And I use this as a training ground, credentializing them, selling their books here, 
selling their services. And it doesn't matter if they're out of state. This is a great way to start. And then you can get booked in other media after you've proven yourself. Because nobody, if I hadn't had a one sheet that you looked at of me, if I had nothing on my LinkedIn, if I had nothing on my YouTube, would you have hired me for this interview? I don't think so. No, sir. No, sir. Yeah, you got a reputation to manage. You're no different as a show producer host than Fox TV 5 here in Las Vegas. They research every potential guest before they say yes or no. It's quite clear, yes or no. They look you up, compare you. They know what they're doing. Every station does the same. They just don't. There is a gate. And yes, I think people through the process of the gate is always and guaranteed to be open for them. Speaking of gate, I have to pay some bills. We got to pay some bills on Gentleman Style Podcast Show. Don't go anywhere. Mr. Carson, Mr. Mitch, my friend here, will be right, right back. Stay tuned. Stay with us. Support for Gentleman Style Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers you precision engineering tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off free worldwide shipping with the code GENSTYLE at manscaped.com. Baby Gear Services DMV specializes in high-quality baby gear rentals in the Maryland and D.C. metro area. We have a wide range of baby gear items for rent, including wooden cribs, car seats, high chairs, and more. We also offer seasonal specials and free delivery. Our prices are very versatile to cover every budget. Wooden cribs start at $17 a day, high chairs, and even car seats start at $5 a day. Check out our website www.bgsdmv.com We are back to the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And today we have my now good friend, Mr. Mitch. And he is spilling the tea on how we all, you, me, all of us can do better and get get in the media and get on board and do this right and work on our personal brand. He gave some some real bona fide pointers. Get your LinkedIn right. Get your YouTube. Write that book, that book you've been aching and nagging about. Write it. And then get on network television. And the only way to do that, you have to get with Mr. Carson and his team, and he'll help you Knock Knock down those doors. If you missed any of that, go back, scroll back. We're on YouTube, iHeartRadio, Radio.com, Spotify, Apple iTunes, Audible, anywhere you get this podcast, Mr. Mitch is there. One more round of applause for Mr. This is huge. This is huge. So, Miss Mitch. Yes, thank (laughs) you, Marcus. Please. I want to be very polite, and, and he's he's yeah, correcting me on the side. So no, this no. is great. sir. How long is your course? How long should is it? Does it vary from person to person? How long should someone be working with you before they are ready? What's the what's the average people are taking? I need about two hours with somebody before they're media trained, and we've gone through the questions, and they we go through and vet it, and then we look at recording before they actually air. I'm very thorough. Because that way there are no mess ups because live TV is unforgiving. I got to protect my brand as much as I have to protect you. So to make sure you're excellent. And then the experience, if they're to come out and do all four stations, it's over done over two days. And the radio show, which is live. So that uh, two hours prep work, we have to go through the questions, got to gather up all your social links because all of that will be put into play when you are aired. All of these things I need to supply the stations. They do their background checks before they can say yes. 
it's a completely different vetting process than putting somebody on a podcast or on a YouTube channel. It, you know, they have a thing called lawyers that get involved. <laughs> they get involved. How yeah. important is a media kit? What is a media kit and how important is it? A media kit shows it's, it's your media resume. It's where mm. you've been, what you talked about. Also includes your social links today and the topics that you're going to cover. It's for there's called a podcast one sheet, same as a media kit today. You, a media kit in the past, a speaker's kit was physical, it was in a notebook or a three ring binder, and it got sent out to meeting planners. That's how long ago, how long I've been in the speaking business. Today, it's all on a digital JPEG. My one sheet I use has several of my logos that I include as the background uh, of my media kit. So it, it shows, or on the one sheet, all the, not all, many of the stations I've been covered on. I can't put them all because there are too many. And then it also mentions the topics that I cover. And I mentioned three of them that I can talk about on a podcast, on a, on a speaking platform, albeit virtual or in-person live. And it's a snapshot. It's a it's the media kit is your balance sheet of your experience. It makes it very easy for a decision maker to decide yes or no. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is incredible. And this is groundbreaking because these I feel like again, it's been gatekeeped, and you're the first expert professional. Probably the only one that's really helping and giving back in this way. A, a true heart of gold. You said that earlier, giving back. What is it? Is it the life experiences that you've had going through the industry as to why you give in this way and why you're helping people like the young lady in, in from Kenya and, and all of us, my audience now? What, what caused this passion? Is it is it that moment? It's. Well, a combination of factors. I think it got accelerated in December, but it originally came from the gift I was given to overcome my addiction and alcoholism from three years ago. And slowly with maturity and life experience, I felt more compelled and privileged to live the life I've lived. I'm very blessed. And then in December of last year, I had a heart attack. And that shook me to the core, realized... Oh my gosh, there's a lot more, and I survived it. When I've got a couple stents in my LAD artery now, which is called the Widowmaker, and I feel like I got a new lease on life. So it accelerated my desire to pay it forward because I want to have a good legacy, a positive legacy to be remembered by. Not that it matters if we're gone. You get my point. I want to do the best I can and contribute the best I can while I'm here. Incredible. Incredible. Mr. Mr. Mitch, sir, I... <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Wow, 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 wow. It, Mr. Mitch, in, in your expertise, you mentioned LinkedIn, YouTube, writing a book, network television, and now... I need a media kit. I got to get on my media kit. Is a website, should I have a website? Is that necessary? I, I think it'd be simple to have a one page landing page. Something with information that people can see. And that can be a scrollable one page. It doesn't have to be complex. That can come later. But a one page site is fine for people that are new in the business. Absolutely. What clients don't you work with? What is not a good um, person that's not a good fit for media? What's a client that you don't work with? Question. Who does not qualify to work with me? And no, I don't want to waste their time or my time is the payroll accounting clerk. Mm. Nothing wrong with that. We need people like, like a payroll accounting clerk. We need a receptionist. But they're not looking to grow the personal brand necessarily. They may want a promotion, which is wonderful, and to maybe then become an accountant. The ideal client for me is an author, is a speaker, or a business owner. I love that. That was that was good because 
I need that because there are people I imagine are going to reach out to you and not a lot of people will do that. Not a lot of experts will say, I don't accept you. That was something new to me in business in general is, is the amount of clients that you have to turn away. Dave Ramsey says, I have to, there are certain clients I have to fire. Correct. Because they're, they're not a good fit for me. They're not a good fit for television. Um, and so I've onboarded that there are people who want to be on the show, gentlemen style podcast, and they're not serving. They're not, they're not, they're not doing anything impactful. And, and, and I've been led to feel like I'm in the wrong for that. And so I wanted to hear from you, you know, am I wrong? Is it wrong to say, Hey, you're not a good fit for television. No, it's honest. Sometimes it stings. Rejection may sting a little bit for some people. I remember when I asked Susie to dance and she said, no, it hurts many years later, but I've overcome it. She wasn't the right one for me. It's just like that. It's a, it's a dating process. And those are people that are good matches and some don't. If we're of different faiths or we're different races or, you know, all the things that we may or may not look for in a, in a match, same hold true here uh, as a client. You've got to match with the right person. There has to be the right chemistry, right mindset, connection, or it's just you're looking for trouble. And with a mature business person, avoids hassles. Why get into a problem? That of the date. You know how that is. You meet somebody and you instantly connect, and you've also meet another person and you instantly are at each other's throats. I prefer to be with the person that I connect with. Fighting is long ago. Why deal with that? A client is someone where you both benefit. There's a fair exchange of value for money, value for time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I wanted to stay here because this is good. Relationships. Yes. Right. How do you, how do you prepare a, a partner when you're going on these trips and you're traveling and people are starting to, you're starting to get traction They've partnered with, with Mitch Carson, and, and they're, they're starting, starting to, to, to really, really pick up. up. They're going global. How do you prepare a partner for the, the, the social media life, the, the travel life, the public speaker life? Oh, gosh. Planning and execution. That's mm. the short answer. Yes, sir. Planning and execution. <laughs> Communicate, y'all. Communicate with your partner. Mr. Mitch, this has been jam-packed. Yes, sir. I want to ask you one last thing. Sure. You have dropped so many nuggets this episode. What is one more nugget that you have in the hat? You've given some great advice. You've given back. If you had one more nugget to speak to that young man, that young girl in the audience, their back is against the wall. They're losing faith in themselves. They're feeling discouraged. What would you say to them? right now if they were watching this believe in you because i do believe in you because marcus does anything is possible you first have to visualize it work on a plan and execute yesterday's failures yesterday's feelings are left yesterday i tell young people this all the time whatever problems exist today aren't necessarily going to be there when you wake up tomorrow Make your journey a fun one. Delete all negative people in your life. And that sometimes needs to be family or put them in their right place. Hang around with the winners and who support you and will advance your dreams. Staying where you are is only for today. Where you want to go tomorrow is up to you. Thank you. Never give up. So true. Never give up. Mr. Mitch, how can my audience connect with you? How can we follow you? How can we learn more? Well, I'm sure in the show notes you put, let me get, if you choose to be in the media in Las Vegas, and it sounds like I'm a good fit to help you, if you feel there's a, a connection, you can reach me and set up a call at getinterviewedguaranteed.com forward slash meet with Mitch. Oh, it's right there. Get interview guaranteed. You're right on top of Marcus. Meet with Mitch. So it's right there in the show notes. 
It's right there in the street yard. Ticker tape. That's what you do. Let me know if I can help you on your media journey. If you're serious about growing your brand, your presence, your credentials, I'd be happy to talk to you. Thank you, sir, for giving the time, giving back in this way. This truly helps. Let's bring that back on the screen one more time. This is, again, and that's www.getinterviewedguaranteed.com backslash meet with Mitch for our audio listeners out there. Connect, connect, connect. Mr. Mitch, Miss, I want to say this to you publicly. Never give up. We need you. I'm, I'm glad you're here. I'm so Me glad too. you're here, and I appreciate you making time to give back in this way. Great. Well, Marcus, thank you for having me as a guest. You take care, and uh, we will see you again very soon. Absolutely. And thank you all for tuning into the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I hope this was inspiring. I hope this was encouraging. Uh, this motivated me, and I hope this helps you realize the potential within you, that you are not done. You are putting this earth for a purpose. And fulfill that purpose. Mr. Mitch and I believe in you. So like we end every show, take care of your friends, take care of your family, and always, always take care of business. This is Marcus, your favorite gentleman, and Mitch, super fragile listener, Espialidocious Carson, signing off. Love you guys. Bye.